Hey guys, hello from the UK. We reached um, yesterday around 8.15 in the morning, UK time. So yep, everything was fine, you guys, and uh, the kids are having fun. Just sitting in there uh, in my sister's beautiful backyard cottage. Um, really nice place. And so this is like the perfect quiet place for me to make these videos. I won't take too long. These are gonna be short devotions, but this is meat for something for us to chew on and meditate on and feed on for the rest of the day. Amen. I'm going to read to you first from Isaiah 35. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. It shall blossom and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. They shall see the glory of the Lord. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold your God, he will come and save you. In the wilderness, a highway shall be there. And what is that highway called? The way of holiness. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they should not go astray. It's talking about the way of holiness. The redeemed shall walk there. Please read the whole thing. Let's talk about that. The way of holiness. What does that remind you of? What is this talking about? What is this highway, the way of holiness in the wilderness in which the redeemed shall walk? And there's peace there on this highway. There is security there. Whoever walks on this path, they are secure. Amen. This way of holiness, think about that. That reminds me right away of even what John the Baptist said. A voice of one calling in the desert. A voice of one calling in the desert. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight a way in the desert, a highway for our God. As well as what Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That is, he is the path of holiness, the highway that is made in the wilderness. Now, as I read the first few verses, I'm sure some of you thought to yourselves, wow, I'm like this dry land. I'm like this parched, weary land, this desert. Watch how every verse was talking about how this dry land, this desert shall rejoice. This dry land, this desert shall blossom. Have you seen a desert blossoming in the natural? No. But look at this. This is a supernatural thing, isn't it? Reminds me again of King David. Time and time again, he would say that I myself, my soul, my whole self is like a dry and weary land right now. And only the Lord can revive me. He says that. Come on. Even the other day, we were meditating on um, Psalm 63, weren't we? What does he say in that? You are my God. I earnestly seek you. My soul, my soul thirsts for you, God. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land. But my soul is satisfied in you. So if you are saying, wow, I feel so, so dry right now. There are a couple of things to remember. Number one, the place to begin is knowing that you are on this way of holiness. The Lord imputed his perfect righteousness to you. So you are redeemed by the Lord. Amen. So we're able to rejoice and walk in security and peace. That is for you. One of the verses that is coming to my mind is um, from Isaiah chapter 32, I believe. Security and peace. This is what we were talking about, right? They are the fruit of righteousness. Security and peace. This refreshment, this, this blossoming, all these things are fruit of righteousness. The effects of that fruit of righteousness is a confidence in God. That's probably what you are lacking, but that's not because Christ has not imputed righteousness to you. It may be because of lack of knowledge. It may also be because you are distracted by various other things. Let's call these other things other gods, shall we? These other things that very quickly take your attention away, take your, your affection for the Lord away distracts you from giving jesus your everything right making you feel like man you know i have no security i have no peace all these kinds of discouraging thoughts may be because you have made your pain your suffering that thing that happened to you those distractions king and lord and god in your life think about the uh, the israelites right and their journey read the old testament to find this out very quickly that they had many gods today 
Think for yourself, what are these idols in your life? Any of these things will cause you heartache. They will distract you away from God. They will trap you. That's what they do. They entrap you. You feeling trapped is because is exactly because of that. You not feeling secure and not feeling this peace is because you are entrapped by various other things. As a child of God, it is your right, your privilege to live undisturbed lives. Yes, yes, that's the thing. When the spirit is poured upon you, the effect of that is the dry land, which is you, your soul, becomes fertile, becomes refreshed, becomes secure, at peace, becomes fruitful, yielding much fruit, becomes undisturbed when it faces anything and everything. That's how it is. When the spirit is poured out. Amen. Does God want his people to dwell in peace and security? Absolutely. So it's not anymore a question of who I wonder if God wants. No, God surely wants you to. Christ imputed his righteousness to us. We're on the way. We are living in, let's put it that way, living in the highway of, of righteousness. Don't reject the grace of God. Don't refuse his peace. Don't be distracted by these other gods. Be strong. Fear not your God. Behold your God. You will see your God. So you have to be certain of this that no matter what, I am certain. Okay, I am certain. Me, Reshma, I am certain that I will see my God come and save me. Are you certain of this? All right. In the wilderness, a highway shall be there. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. The redeemed shall walk there. This is amazing. This is amazing grace. This is amazing grace. I want to, I and I, and I am walking in this way, in him. Amen. He has imputed his righteousness to me, his wisdom to me. So I'm undisturbed. The, the issue is not on God's side. Is what I'm trying to say. It's not that God is holding back and whatever. No, no, there's there's a disconnect somewhere. Meditate on this, guys, and continue abiding in God. My God, he will save me. I shall blossom. I will rejoice with joy and singing. Amen. Meditate on these things. It will come to your mind, all those things that you will need to let go of once and for all. And, and like I talked about yesterday, that belief system, that thought process in your mind, you have to bring it down. Those negative running thoughts in your mind, you have to stop it. I shared this same thing with so many people and the ones who meditate on it and they get it, they will see a total shift in their lives. Just saying, oh, but that just sounds too good to be true. Well, God is good experience his goodness his greatness you see wow all the things about god how he makes a way where there is no way yeah in the natural sounds too good to be true but you know what i want to live in that realm of i believe in god and i believe in the supernatural i'm living in this world but i live like a spiritual person having supernatural experiences in this world i'm certain of that and i encourage you with this that 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 you will believe the same amen pray for you especially those of you who have anxious hearts today did you read that verse say to those who have a anxious heart be strong fear not behold your god he will come and save you it isn't just just a feel-good message or just a motivational speech this is the truth pray father that not one person here will reject your grace lord jesus thank you father we depend on your grace we just fall back into the arms of, the, of a loving god a loving father today lord i pray that faith will arise on the inside of everyone at the sound of my voice, thank you, Jesus, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. May this be your experience. What we read today, may this be your experience. You will see the way. You will walk in the way. Thank you, Jesus. Those of you who are crying today, you will rejoice and you will be glad in the Lord. No matter what we go through, Lord, this will be how my story always ends, is that in the wilderness, in the dry land, I shall be glad. This will be our experience. Thank you, Jesus. All right, guys, I'm going to let you all go. All right, I can see my family over there um, playing games or something. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to them now. It's a Friday. It's Friday. Yeah. 
How many of you are going to watch the uh, the Olympics, the ceremony? Yeah, let me know. Let me know in the comments below. Leave some comments below, guys. God bless you, and I will see you in another video on uh, Monday. Monday morning, you'll have another one to watch, okay? God bless you guys. Bye-bye.